Nolan Bushnell is keeping very busy with his game, Computer Space. But around the exact same time frame, another man by the name of Ralph Baer had also been working on the idea of video games. But his focus was for attaching them to your TV at home, rather than placing them out in the public. After building a prototype, he showed his device to the people at Magnavox. Impressed with what they saw, they decided to market this idea, and the Magnavox Odyssey was born. Now this very first video game console came with two controllers, six game cards, and is powered by six C batteries. Alright, let's fire this baby up. Batteries here, controller there, and now we connect the video cable from the console over to the, uh, to the, uh, wait a minute, what the fuck is this? Instead of getting a video cable that looks like this, or this, you end up with this. Of course, if you happen to look in the instruction manual, we see that Magnavox relied on using two of the most obscure video connectors ever made just to play this on your television, especially this one. Good lord, I'll be scouring the universe just trying to find this part. Hello, my fine sir. I'm looking for a piece of hooks into this. Yeah, I don't know what the hell they were thinking of either. Alright, so now that we've gotten our video cable, it's time to hook this up and play some Odyssey. And here's a fast fact. If you're thinking that each one of these cards holds its very own game, then you'd be wrong. Because the main overall game is actually built inside the Odyssey itself. Then each card placed into the machine creates its own set of command codes that alters the game in its own unique way. And one of the nice things about the Odyssey is that it only turns on when you place one of these cards in the slot. Let there be life! Would you like to play a game? Yeah, but give me one second. Now most Odyssey games are intended for two players, so thankfully I was able to score a super rare Odyssey with a HAL artificial intelligence unit built inside to be my opponent. That's correct, Dave. Shall we begin? Of course. And we'll start off with the flagship game of the Odyssey called Tabletop Tennis. Just like in real tennis, the goal here is to keep hitting the ball back and forth until you knock it off the opponent's side of the screen. To bring the ball back into play, the loser must press the reset button on top of his controller. Now trying to get a feel for this game can take some time, since on the controller, the dial on the left moves you back and forth, and the one on the right moves you up and down, and this little one puts spin on the ball. <laughs> Spun that sucker right out of the game. Of course, there's always those annoying glitches you can run into as well. Not for crying out loud. Now, in an attempt to make these games even more fun, Magnavox also included a whole assortment of accessories to play along with the game. The most vital of these being the plastic overlays that you place onto your TV. So now your regular tennis game can now be played on a green tennis court. Oh cool! Even though it is the same game. Oh. Place any of these other cards into the machine, and this game is altered so you can play other overlays, like hockey, football, and even skiing. In this game, you're required to navigate the ball down any of these paths in order to reach the end. Of course, by the time this happens, you'll probably die of boredom. You also might see the uncanny resemblance that this overlay has to the board game Candyland. And some of these things seem reminiscent of Peppermint Forest and Gumdrop Mountain. I thought this was supposed to be a video game, not a board game. Yeah, what a ripoff! Switching over to a new overlay brings us to a game called Simon Says, and it works with these flashcards. Alright, Hal, Simon Says, foot. Alright, now Simon Says, nose. Alright, now Simon Says, penis. Alright, now Simon Says, up with these cards. Now Simon says foot. 
Don't forget it. Let's try one more here. Can't go wrong with roulette. All right, let's bet some money on uh, 35. Go! 18? Oh man, so close. All right, well, let's put everything on 22. Go! Nine? There's not even nine on the damn board! Piece of crap! Yes, the Odyssey came packaged with tons of these add-on games. All right, Hal, find the state of Ohio. Now find the state of Florida. Ugh, how did Magnavox even think these games would be fun? Hal, find the state of denial. Magnavox eventually went on to release additional games that were sold separately, like the racing game Wipeout that works with Card 5. And even after reading the rules for this game, I still have no idea how the hell you even play it. But of course, that's nothing compared to the overcomplicated game Invasion, which needs cards 4, 5, and even 6 to play. And you'll be using both the video game and board game at the same time for some very strategic gameplay. Hello Dave, are you winning? Beats the hell out of me. Magnavox even produced card number 7, that came packaged with the game Volleyball, and card 8, that came packaged with the game Handball. Of course, there was one final accessory that Magnavox made for the Odyssey. Coming up next, the Odyssey Light Rifle.